In the eternal battle between man and nature, nature is triumphing in the guise of a volcano, the Sofrere Hills volcano in over two years of continuous eruptions, has destroyed more than half of the island of Montserrat. Plymouth, the capital of this British colonial island, has been transformed into post-apocalyptic ruins. Located 250 miles southwest of Puerto Rico, Montserrat was for years considered a paradise in the heart of the Caribbean. Its peace, loving, friendly population, the beautiful ocean, and its renowned golf courses made tourism one of the island's major sources of income. And the greatest tourist attraction was, without a doubt, the Sofrer Volcano. But since the eruption of the volcano in July 1995, after remaining inactive for hundreds of years, over half of Montserrat's 12,000 residents were forced to emigrate to other Caribbean islands, to Great Britain, or to the United States. Those who chose to remain on the island are living in shelters and churches in St. John's, a town in the northern region of Montserrat, which is still considered safe by the authorities. For the people who have stayed on the island, the volcano is still the greatest threat. Since its first eruption, Sofrere has been monitored by highly reputed volcanologists from all over the world. The most difficult aspect, according to the scientists, is talking about the real risks, not only for the island, but also for the people who are unwilling to leave Montserrat. There are two, two ways in which you can assess risk. One is on an individual basis. Um, you can say, OK, I accept that risk or I don't accept that risk. But there is also um, what's called societal risk, which is the risk to the entire population. Uh, there are people in the population who aren't in a position to make their own minds up, children, the mentally unstable, etc. Um, there are people who may not have all the information they need to make their mind up. So at some point, uh, the, the elected authorities um, or whoever's in charge has to make some decisions on acceptable risk on behalf of the population because you can't take it down to an individual level. Everyone here trusts the scientists. As long as they continue to say that the northern part of the island is habitable, the remainder of the population on Montserrat will not leave. The challenge of going overseas is a lot worse than staying here. So we are willing to take the challenge staying here than to just leave and go away. However, the scientists say that no part of the island is safe in the event of a big eruption. In other words, the people who are still living on the island are in mortal danger, although they claim that the risk they are taking is a conscious one. Who will I be listening to? I will be listening to, me, to myself. I will have to judge everything and listen to it and figure it out and come to my decision. Today, both the southern and central parts of the island are completely blanketed by volcanic ash. Scientists cannot be certain, but they calculate that the southern part of the island will remain totally uninhabitable for at least five more years. The authorities and the population are aware of the minimum preventative measures necessary. Be ready to evacuate in case of emergency. Maintain conditions that enable the remaining population to have access to treated water provide general as well as emergency medical assistance, and even be prepared for eventual hurricanes. In the area of health services, a hospital has been installed at a school building in the city of St. John's. The school had to be entirely adapted to function as a hospital. The medical staff has also had to adapt to the precarious nature of the situation. Well, one, trying to keep a health service going in this very rundown facility, and uh, number two, we had 12 district clinics. We are now down to three because the other nine are in the danger zone. And we're still trying to offer the same service to the public in terms of maternal and child health, chronic disease, family life and family planning services, and so on. The volcano is still active and the eruptions send ashes into the air causing intoxication and many cases of asthma and other respiratory problems, especially in children. To provide medical assistance, two emergency clinics have been installed with help from other countries. The medical personnel who attend the population come from other islands in the region. The Pan American Health Organization is assisting with the measures being taken to maintain these services in Montserrat, and all hospital services are free of charge. There is no lack of medicine. Lacking are nurses, who left the island for various reasons, including the absence of housing and schools for their children. 
A solution to this situation is coming from other islands in the Caribbean. Challenges at the moment, um, well, you know, the staffing problem is a challenge at the moment. And if more nursing staff leave, you know, we will be in a, we have, we will have, we will be having a lot of problems, you know, if more of our staff leave. Okay. Even though we're getting assistance from outside, we don't know how long that will continue. So that is a challenge for us at the moment. Right. And another one is that uh, we have quite a few elderly folks around, you know, and they are, well, you know, they need a lot of care. Most of them cannot do anything to help themselves. So we have them here. It's about 38 we have. International cooperation appears to be one of the most important factors in the maintenance of health services. Cooperation is taking the form of doctors and nurses who come from other countries and also the donation of medicine and hospital supplies. We are one Caribbean people. Monstrat, St. Lucia, Grenada, Jamaica, one Caribbean people. As a nurse, I feel that if the nurses needed some help, like it was said that the nurses are all stressed out and burnt out, not from work in the hospital, but from the volcanic reactions and having to move about. I feel we are the best people to come to their rescue. The only means of transportation available to or from the island of Montserrat nowadays are a ferry boat donated by the French government and a helicopter service that functions every day with priority given to the most needy. Both the boat and the helicopter make trips only to and from Antigua. Montserrat has only one bank and one gas station left. Nevertheless, the supply of food continues. Water quality is still under control. The water source, located at the top of a mountain eight miles from the volcano, has not been touched by the volcanic ash. The social structure on Montserrat is also in turmoil. With the social instability and the stress triggered by the situation, however, Montserrat is beginning to see cases of adolescent pregnancy and theft at the shelters, as well as some types of violence and even rape. Lack of housing and the absence of privacy in the shelters, the closing of the banks and insurance companies, lack of employment, the high cost of food and fuel, and the increase in the population on the northern part of the island are cited as some of the reasons for such disturbance. In Montserrat, people have seen personal fortunes disappear. They've seen all their dreams, all their work for disappear. Um, so from the health staff point of view, people have been affected personally in that they've lost everything they have. I've personally lost everything I've had. And in addition to that, your work environment is now much less than desirable. So it's really a challenge to remain here under these circumstances. The environment is suffering not only the effect of the volcanic ash, but also from the lack of basic infrastructure in the northern region of the island. In a disaster of this type, there is no way to prevent damage to buildings, but Montserrat also lies in the path of hurricanes. Because of this, the hospital has taken all of the necessary preventive measures should the island be hit by a hurricane. Reinforcement of the roof structure and placement of wooden boards across doors and windows to protect the patients and the equipment. We're in the hurricane season now, so we have a compound situation. In addition to having to cope with the issues of the volcano and being constantly on the alert if we have a, a mass casualty event, we also have to be prepared for the hurricane situation as well. One of the most dangerous aspects of the volcano is the flow of gases with heat greater than 1,000 degrees centigrade. Where they pass, nothing survives. Their ash start falling down and it blankets the whole area. There was a cloud of black ash just blank out the whole place and the place became very dark. But while I was outside the car, I was gasping for breath because I couldn't breathe. It's like that hot air takes out the oxygen. So it's like, you know, every time I'm losing my breath, I say, my God, I'm going to collapse here today. Mr. Arthur Mead survived his encounter with volcanic gases. He suffered burns on both of his feet and was sent to Guadeloupe for surgery and treatment. In spite of his frightening experience and the burns on his feet, Arthur, like most of the residents of Montserrat, does not want to leave the island. 
I will stay here as long as the scientists tell me that on the north end is safe. You see, if I put it this way, there's no place on earth that is 100% safe. No place. Stay here. I want to stay here. I don't want to leave my country at all. So far, the volcano is winning the battle between man and nature. But man has not stopped fighting to conquer what he wants. The volcano has destroyed more than half of the island. Homes, schools, churches, hospitals. But it has not yet destroyed the hope of the many residents who, rounded up and pushed to the northern part of the island, still insist on their dream that one day everything will again be like it was before, and that Montserrat will once again be called paradise in the heart of the Caribbean.